Greetings, everyone. This is Kirsten Wilbert with RMW, and get excited because today is the beginning of Spring Wine Fling. It lasts from today through March 31st, and there are over 60 restaurants participating in this promotion. You get two courses and two glasses of wine for $55. Today, we're at Equinox on 19th to learn all about their Spring Wine Fling menu and to learn so much about wine. We have special guests, so make sure you tune in, listen up, Pull up your chair, and of course, make sure you visit WineFlingDC.com to see the list of participating locations and to make your reservations today. Good afternoon, everyone. We are at Equinox on 19th, our new location of Equinox Restaurant after almost 25 years. We are having a fireside chat with my two very good friends, Nadine and Natalia. And we are kicking off Wine Fling Week for REMW from March 19th to the 31st. And we have some great things to discuss. I am Todd Gray. I'm the executive chef and co-owner of Equinox on 19th with my lovely wife, Ellen. As well, we own uh, the Federal in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. And I have been cooking in this town since 1989. Myself, I had hair then. Uh, and um, uh, I am uh, been in Washington for almost 40 years. And, uh, I'm still loving downtown Washington and being part of all that it has to offer. And, Love it, love it. My name is Natalia Georgieva and I am the owner of a company named Buhemich Wines. Uh, I am specializing in importing wines from Bulgaria just because I'm from there and uh, I've been in the wine industry for over 10 years now and I am really proud of uh, what we have in Bulgaria for um, wines and uh, everything I bring I am really standing out uh, behind each product just because the wines that we're bringing are mostly coming from native grapes and uh, coming from small producers, uh, mostly low intervention wines, and all of them are really great for uh, different food pairings, different uh, restaurants with uh, uh, very uh, interesting uh, menu options like Equinox. Um, and we're super happy that we have them here paired for this special event. Wine thing. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Nadine Brown. I'm a sommelier, but I, you know, I'm, I'm a hospitality professional and I specialize in wine. I've been in uh, the DC area a little over 20 years. That's when Natalia said, well, what should we be doing for wines? I said, well, we have to figure out the menu first. Yeah. You know, and we can never pair wines until we know what we're going to eat or yeah, being the other way around, you know, when we sit down and we think, wow, you know, I would like to drink some Chablis tonight. I want to drink some Chablis from California. I want to drink some Bulgarian Cab Rock. Then we can put our food, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. when I think when we had our discussion was, well, we need to do two plant-based dishes and two more traditional dishes. That's where we kind of set up the seafood dish, which I thought was just right off the get-go. It was perfect with the rosé. Yeah. And then I thought, well, it would be amazing with the plant-based dishes as well, with the plant-based cauliflower. And we talked about Pino, we talked about possibly a, a Bordeaux blend, and we decided, no, let's go with Cap Franc. We thought that Cap Franc would work well with the vegetarian vegan dish, and we thought it would work very well with steak. So I think that's how we came together on it, and that's kind of how we built our menu. I know that Nadine has a lot of experience and probably can share with us now, maybe a little bit more about what her thoughts are on selections of wine versus food or food and wine pairing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's one of the great things about spring wine playing is that, you know, each restaurant is doing this collaboration, the collaboration between the winemaker or the sommelier um, and coming up with a menu really tailored, um, you know, for you to, to, to enjoy for these couple, couple of weeks. Um, you know, and I, these wines from uh, Bulgaria are great example of one of my first my first tip for when you go out to a restaurant um i do burgers at home all the time so when i go out i'm not going to do a burger because that's easy um you know so try something outside of your comfort zone you know dc is so incredible it's a, it's a really um wine savvy town really international town um, with wines from all over the, the world it's kind of the wild, wild west and the wild world where we can get wines amazing wines from all over so, um, and a restaurant is a safe place to try something that you haven't had before, right? Because we, we've tasted, you know, we've tasted all, all 20 of them to pick out, you know, the top, the top five and present to you. So definitely try something you haven't tried um, before. It's definitely a, a good tip uh, for, for 
ordering out in a restaurant? Well, I've always thought that depending on the preparation, um, we always have to be a little careful with vegetables and wine. I think that you have to, because sometimes wines can be a little dominant on the vegetable pairing, or sometimes the vegetables can actually dominate the wine, depending on what it is. But I was always something that I was cooking for people, whether it was tasting menu, or something they would say, not too much veg, not too much vegetal influence on the dishes, which I always was kind of challenged with because I was like, well, how are you going to pair the proteins? And I think that some of those things like root vegetables can be a little challenging against uh, certain red wines, and obviously, you know, asparagus is always a challenge. And I'd love to hear Nadine's thought on that. And artichokes, yeah, I, for you, yeah. you know, but for me, I always think of bright whites when we think of our, our plant-based tasting menu. Bright whites, soft reds. That's the general zone I like to go into. Champagne, uh, cavas to start the meal, whether we're going from some a little silky to root of artichoke soup, or we're progressing into something in autumn, whether we're having something with the uh, butternut squash risotto, even done with you know toasted almonds. So we're thinking, what's gonna hit those nutty flavors? Is it gonna be albanino, or we're gonna go transition to mushrooms? We're gonna phase into a Pinot Noir course, um, so, I mean, that's been my general, maybe Nadine has some different thoughts, but I yeah. think for me, I'm plant-based and vegetarian. I think of bright, elegant whites and softer, leaner red wine. Yeah. That makes sense. I don't know what you're And great rosé. And, and, well, that's ex and, and what better thing, a tra the, tra the ultimate transition wine. I mean, the, who, the ultimate transition, we've had a couple of white courses. Where are we going? Ah, we have to do something rosé to transition into our red wine. Yeah, and and it turns out a lot of the wines that I've found that go well with vegetarian or plant-based are the wines off the beaten path. Are the you know are the the, the bright white wines from Sicily or um, Chablis from Spain? You know, or this gorgeous, gorgeous um, you know blends. Um, I love California wines. You know, I ran a wine program that was most you know, heavy in Napa Cab. A lot of times Napa Cab is not the, the way to go with asparagus because it will make the asparagus taste bitter, it will make the wine taste bitter. It's just no fun in your mouth <laughs> at, at all. So a lot of times it's indigenous grapes um, from, from different places, cider, um, wines that are, that are sometimes difficult to pair um, Champion Blanc, for example. Sometimes you get asparagus um, notes, Cabernet Franc, it's get that green pepper, you know, so things, you know, matching that with those pro that those profiles in, in the vegetables that you're using. Um, and we, you know, we think about vegetables like carrots, broccoli, and so, but there's so much, right? It's more than, I think, when people think plant-based, they think, Right, just like 20 things, but um, back to just being really lucky, we have things from all over the world that you wouldn't even think about or, or you know, having your, your pair of pair food. Eat plant based. It's not yeah. like you're going out to have to eat vines and weeds for dinner. You know, it's like it's, it's a plant, right? You know, it can be a lot of things. A lot of beans and salsa beans and nuts. And and yeah. Beans. And nuts. The and whole yeah. garden. The whole garden, right? <laughs> right. I mean, we use nuts and cashews and other things oh as yeah well. I, I, of course you know i, you I think know. the basic thing is is when you have this thing comes. but you know what like i i, I hate it but i don't hate it but it is what it is you know if someone comes in they have a nut allergy and they're on a plant-based diet you're like man oh you gotta understand and that. they're gluten-free yeah. and you know you're like hey listen and i'm not kidding and this happens all the time you know yeah. and death on sunday brunch is really like you know, you're like well you have to understand i mean we don't have any dairy so we have to drive in Almond, we have to drive in cashew, yeah. we have to make a cream sauce out of almond and tofu, and, and then they have a soy allergy. So, I mean, those are things that are kind of tough, but it's like that, that you have to use nut based. And you know, it's not, there really isn't anything as good, I really think. If you make your own almond milk with a touch of vanilla and you just a little bit of like agave in it, and it's cold, it's amazing. But again, um, I think we have to, we always drive a lot of nuts in for our plant based. Need the support of the protein, the depth of flavor. So yeah, that's another. Be um, sure to check out it's on you know, <laughs> a disclaimer. I'd be like, no, it's not a thing. 
you know, and there are different reasons why we go out to, you know, go out to dine. Sometimes it's date night with your significant other. Sometimes it's a business dinner. You know, if you can, and um, I know I didn't always have my 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 wine list on the website. Sometimes I did, or just an idea. You know, take a look at the website to see some of their selections. You know, especially if it's a business dinner and you kind of want to have an idea before you go in. Um, you know, wine lists are getting a little smaller, but sometimes it's a big, you know, it's a tone being being dropped to you. So, you know, take a look at the menu, just kind of familiarize yourself with the menu and some of their offerings before you, you go in can help. Um, just put yourself at ease. Um, everyone has their phone, there's so much information. Um, but use the staff that's there, you know, talk to the small days, talk to, um, talk to the manager, talk to your bartender, um, is, is another great way to go about, um, selecting wine. Um, not knowing the language of wine, there's a language for everything, right? There's, if you're in medicine, if you're a lawyer, sometimes lawyers speak and I'm like, what? I have no idea what you just said. And the same thing probably happens with, with, with us wonky wine people. They're like, what are you talking about? So just use the language that you, that you know, you know, even if you don't know the exact words to use for what you want, you know, just say, I'm looking for something dry, something sweet. You know, give an example of the last thing you, you had before. Um, you know, talking about um, talking about price can be uncomfortable, especially if it's a business dinner. But there's there's discreet ways of doing it, pointing at the wine at the wine list, or even if you say something that you have all the time that gives the person helping with your selection, you know, idea of of where you're comfortable. You know what you're comfortable spending. Um, so those are definitely some of my top top tips in um, selecting from, from restaurants. But above all, you just take advantage of, it's a curated, like going to a museum, like someone has everything on there is, is selected and chosen um, and, and is sometimes a safe, safer bet um, is, is, is really important. It's really interesting. It's one of the things that got me interested in wine. Um, but choosing wines where, you know, from a country or a region where they have a lot of seafood is, 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 is interesting and, and um, a safe, not safe, it's just a, a good way of doing it. You know, like Galicia in northern um, Spain, you know, they're on the coast and they're, the wines and foods kind of grow up together. Um, preparation, you know, we were talking a little bit about, you know, how a chef prepares some of his um, plant-based foods and what he does to, um, you know, get texture and proteins and that mouthfeel that can be missing, <laughs> you know, they're missing, you know, from, from, from steak, whether it's grilled, what the sauce is, you know, so even if it's a fish, if it's done with tomato sauce and like um, black olives or something, you could do a cap sauce with uh, like a swordfish or a, a heavier fish with this red wine, uh, but if it was like a light silver sole with papers and butter, um, you wouldn't be able to, the, the, the red wouldn't pair as well. So it's not an, you know, it's not a absolute all the time, right? You know, in terms in terms of pairing. So this next two weeks on our menu, we're offering uh, two choices for each course. For the first course, we are offering a plant-based curry cauliflower on black uh, forbidden rice with baby carrots, or a hand-rolled rigatoni pasta with a ragu of sweet shrimp and scallops with pernil saffron cream. Then we move to the main course. The main course is a, a, a bourguignon of champignon, which is like a classic red wine mushroom dish for between traditionally and beef, but we do a plant-based version with uh, wild mushroom, with soba noodles, micro cilantro, sweet peppers. And then the traditional dish is a grilled black Angus beef hanger steak uh, done with the uh, Israeli couscous and red Swiss chard. Today you bring wine flame.
We hope you learned so much. Thank you for joining us for our fireside chat about spring wine fling now through March 31st. Make sure you visit wineflingdc.com to check out 60 locations that are participating in this promotion. Two courses and two glasses. We'll see you all throughout the rest of March. This is Kirsten Wilbert with REMW and happy spring wine.